I'm joined now by Jill Sally Granger, a travel journalist who's been covering this story. And Jill, it's a massive one, isn't it? The collapse of Thomas Cook. Yeah, it's absolutely awful. I mean, so many tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, in fact, people devastated in the UK and around the world. People have lost their jobs, they've lost their holidays. It's really, it's really very sad. What do you think went wrong? So Thomas Cook started having troubles about 2012 because really that's when the internet revolution took off. People were booking holidays on their own. They didn't need to go to that high street travel agent anymore. And although the company tried to adapt, it's just such a big beast of a company. You know, these huge, huge companies quite often struggle to adapt quickly and it just failed to do that. So it's been in difficulty for some time. So this now represents a warning then for many other players in the industry too. Yeah, certainly with, throughout the UK, every company I've spoken with has struggled in the last 18 months because of course for us, uh, because of Brexit. Brexit is causing problems. People simply aren't booking as many holidays as they had been or spending as much money because they don't know what's going to happen, if they're going to have a job or what what might happen in the future. And internationally, the trend is also what you've mentioned, that we are our own travel agents. Yes, of course. So everybody's going online and booking all these different elements themselves. But what a lot of people aren't realizing is that all of these elements might not be covered. So I would encourage anybody to make sure you have travel insurance, no matter how you book, that covers something like this called end supplier failure. Because what that means is that if your holiday company goes bust, whether it's a flight or accommodation, that at least you would get something back. Jill, we're seeing live pictures from Mallorca Airport, everyone looking a bit disgruntled, mm. but it's reasonably calm there, and that's the picture we're hearing from many airports around the world as well. But what about the point I raised in the introduction that we've just heard from the Tourism Minister of Tunisia? Their hotels are owed $66 million by Thomas Cook. And then I was reading earlier about travel companies in places like Crete, where 70% of people who operate in the tourism sector on Crete have contracts with Thomas Cook. So it's the ripple effect as well. I mean, it's going to have a massive impact throughout the UK and around the world. It is desperately sad news.